The people have spoken. I'm here. Chopping it up with charms, episode one. I've got my own mini series, Let's Flip and Go. But before we jump into it, don't forget, like, subscribe, all of that. All the normal YouTube thing. You already know what to do. Notification bell, whatever that does. Do all of that, man. I, I want you tapping all of it. Comment. Co comment that ice cold emoji right now. For, so, so I just know you're watching this video. So I know you're dialed in. This is episode one. This is a historic moment. Weekly, weekly basis you'll get one of these. Listen, this week, overviewing the world of football. Just after all the European fixes have been played, come on, 4-2 against Genk. Genk, Genk what? Genk these nuts, do you know what I'm saying? But listen, is Cole Palmer the best player in world football right now? The question's been asked over the last week, is he the best player in the Premier League? And to be honest, I think it's part and parcel with the best player in the world, isn't it? Because bar like what? Vinicius, Mbappe, a handful of them. We won't go into that right now, but apart from a handful of them, you know, it's hard to make the the conversation that the Premier League doesn't host the best players in the world on a regular basis. And for Cole Palmer to be spoken about in high regards of is he the best out of the bunch, I think it really says a lot. I mean, most goals and assists involvement, goal, well, goal involvements uh, since the beginning of the 23-24 season coming to now, uh, edging one more over Erling Haaland. Uh, Non-penalty goals, everyone seems to love this thing about penalties, but he's doing it just the same with non-penalties. Non-penalty goals, he's expected to score one every, every point for uh, 90 minutes. So it's just absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, the guy is in the top 4% percentile in the world. I, I don't understand it, man. Where this kid has come from, the ability. I mean, I know where he's come from because I've watched the development over time. Me and Dan saw this guy at Man City, and we were thinking, Jesus, what a player he is. And to come to Chelsea, we were thinking, 40 million's a touch. Now we're thinking it's daylight robbery. I mean, 40 million. You d you make your mind up, yeah? Would you rather Mason Mount, or would you rather Cole Palmer and 30 million? It's it's just insane. It's besotting. It's, it's, it's dumbfounding that a player like this has fallen into our laps. And the ability and the numbers he's putting up on a regular basis. Me personally, this is an opinion-based game. I'm under the impression that he's the best player in the world at the minute. Uh, I couldn't name you a single player in world football who's more effective, who offers more to their team, uh, and who contributes to more goals. Because, you know, even the numbers won't lie. If you think I'm wrong, fbref.com, you can check all the stats out yourself. Just look up Cole Palmer's name. Look at the numbers he's putting up. It's... Absolutely diabolical. I, 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 it's 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 hard to statistically quantify, if you will, uh, but I think he's the best player in world football when it comes to goal involvements. But it's just the small things. It's the where he is on the pitch. It's it's the goals that he's not scoring and the reaction after the game. You know, in the post match interview where he seemed, you know, quite frustrated that he didn't get a fifth or a sixth, and the assist he put on a plate for Nicholas Jackson. God damn, he's. 40 yards, whipping it over the top, like, filthy, filthy, filthy level of football league ability, and, you know, the more I talk about it, the more, the more adamant I am, like, I, I think he is the best player in world football, and, you know, he's on 130 grand a week, the kid earns more than I can imagine earning in a week in my life, and, and, you know, I, th I think, I think he's relatively underpaid for the ability that we're getting out of him, I, I, I think that, yeah, just, Everything all in, I, I think it's hard to justify uh, against the fact that I think Cole Palmer could be the most informed, if not the best player in world football right now. And yeah, I'll, I'll die on that hill as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the next topic I wanted to jump into is about a player who's also just got bags and bags and bags of ability. But I just feel like this kid's just AI, man. This this guy can't be real. I'm talking about John Duran. Wonder goals are one thing, but wonder goals on a weekly basis, on a week in, week out basis, coming on in the 60th minute to bag from the 30 yards out against Bayern Munich for Aston Villa, yeah, to make it 1 0, yeah, secure the first win in 41 years for your club against a team like Bayern Munich is. It's dumbfounding. I'm loving this little Selly as well. I'm loving this little. Me, I'm loving that, bro. I'm loving the arrogance. I'm loving the effort to even shoot from these ranges. I mean, some of the goals he's been scoring, I think it was against Wolves, he just pinged it from 30 yards top left. It doesn't even make sense. Like, the angle of shooting doesn't make sense. But to, 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 to get it off effectively, 
score, win the game, doesn't make sense to me, man. I, I, I think that this John Duran is just a different animal. Uh, I, I think that he, he's honestly, I think he's due a lot. I was going to say due a big move, but I don't see Aston Villa wanted to let go of him. And to be honest, they've got to start starting him. Like, this is a thing that's a bit of a different... Bit of a problem, isn't it? Because they like to play with the one striker and they've got Watkins and they can't exactly take him out, but they can't move John Duran around and just make him a 10. You know, you can't really play that second striker because it affects the wings too much, but they've got to find a way around this, otherwise, someone's going to poach him up. It's just, it just feels, it feels fictional. Every week, this guy comes on in the 70th minute and he's not just bagging the winner, he's scoring wonder goals. Like, the guy's AI, and, and I've been saying this for a week now, man. If, if, it, it feels like the more I talk about John Duran, the more he's going to shock me. Like, the kid is so good at kicking ball. He's so good at what he does. I don't understand it. And what's crazy to me is he's been at Villa for a year. It's not like he's been brought in and he's having this renaissance. Like, he, he's he been playing for Aston Villa. Like, when did they get him in? March. No, I can't be March. But they got him in about 2013. Yeah, sorry, 2023? Yeah, it says they got him in 2023, played a bunch of games, didn't, didn't play, play too well, didn't really score. This season, six appearances, all off the bench with 20 minutes to go, four goals in the Premier League, uh, and done it twice, I'm pretty sure, in the Champions League. So, I, I, he, he's the best rotational super sub that we've had in years. And this brings back a topic. Is prime football back? You know what I mean? Like, with Erling Haaland just being an absolute shit house and the goals he puts up on a weekly basis, we've got our, you know, our striker we love to hate back. You, you know, we've got players like what's it, like Buendia and uh, what's that other geezer you played around at like Aston Villa and Brighton? He's a shit house. More, Neil Morpé, he's an absolute shit house. This is what like we're kind of getting our game back a little bit, man. And players like John Duran is is a callback to when you'd see Matty Taylor pinging it from forty yards as Portsmouth, you know. And it's it's really it it's a good look for the future that these that these kids nowadays are going to have a little snippet of what we had in football, you know, personalities and violence and aggression and wonder goals and because it felt like that dried up for five or six years, didn't it? It felt like no one was really allowed to be expressive on the football pitch and. You weren't really allowed to take shots from long range. You get subbed off and you weren't really allowed to be creative. But nowadays, I feel like this is a bit more of a renaissance, which brings me back round to probably my final point of the day. But can Chelsea piss around and win the Premier League? You know, the Premier League is at its best when the top six sides are kicking. You know, maybe apart from Spurs, they don't really kick on too much. But when... When, you know, United are good, when City are good, when Chelsea are good, when Liverpool are good. You know, this is when Premier League is, is, is premier. You know what I mean? This is when the, league, when the league is really the best in the world. And Chelsea are expected to have, what, a 4% chance to win the league this season? Something like that by Opta. Uh, I know the bookies have got us at 25-1, to 1, which is a probability of around the same 4 to 5%. Uh, I, I think it's embarrassing. I think that we have at least a 10% chance. I think people look into the history too much, but the ability that we've been showing week in, week out in the Premier League now for the f for the first month of the tournament, I thought we it's been a special look. I I thought we look we look we look sharp, particularly going forward. Uh, Chelsea's always been a very defensive team, so if we can go back to our roots, work on that defence. Baddy Shield gets in a car crash and he's aptly replaced immediately. Uh, Cole Colwell comes in good. Fofana comes good. Uh, we just need a couple of things to, to, to hit and then the defence is sorted. But when it comes to the attack, I mean, listen, you're talking about players like Christopher Nkunku, Nicholas Jackson, Cole Palmer, Joao Felix, Pedro Neto. You, you know, you're, you're talking really, really high level football players and an abundance of them. You know, Jaden Sancho, players that we can't even fit into the side. I mean, we've got so much depth going forward. I, I I, I struggle to see a world where we don't keep this form up for the rest of the season. You know, this has happened very thick and fast, in my opinion. I feel like where we are now with the goals we're scoring, the, the performances, the ability, the fitness levels I'm seeing going forward, it's something that I was not expecting. I won't lie, in pre-season, I, I really, really, really struggled to see us coming good. And 
to see where we are now already in October, the, it's what, time of recording is the 4th of October, I, I, I think this is the best Chelsea I've seen in years and I don't see a, I, you know, I, I don't see a reason why we can't go and win the league this season. I, I, I genuinely believe Chelsea can win the Premier League this season. Uh, and yeah, just watch the football to find out why. I, I guess, you know, attacking, we just look excellent. It's just about patching those holes up in defence. And I think that's very plausible and very doable. Uh, but yeah, man, that's going to be my weekly rantings for this week. Uh, thank you. That's every, Cole Palmer, the best player in the world. I think Chelsea can win the league. I think John, John Duran is absolute fictitious AI. Uh, and all in all, prep football's back. I, I, I love it, man. I'm very happy with it. So listen... Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I want to see a heat emoji next to the ice. If you made it all 11 minutes, I want to see that in the comments so I know who the real ones. Real, separate, the, uh, the fake. I think it's something like that. Anyways, love. God bless. Two blue charms. I'm out. Boy.